Some things are products of their time and maybe best forgotten? I don't know. This game's probably best forgotten, but I mean, I had to find something to play. And this is in fact a game that I played quite a long while back, a few times over. I only managed to beat it once. I'll get into that as time goes on. But it's bearable. So welcome to Let's Play Rocket Power Dreams game. Strangely enough, the box art for this game only says Rocket Power on it. It doesn't say Dreams game. Anyways, so as a quick warning, as unfortunate as this, as this might be, also this is back when we had password systems instead of anything else. But as a warning, I am a bit under the weather right now, to say the least. And I try to do everything I possibly could to mitigate that. Oh no. Also, I should probably warn you guys that I I never really watched Rock of Power much in the first place. But I had this game for some reason. I don't really remember much of anything about the show at all. So I'm gonna try to remember characters' names and the like. I only know Otto and Reggie because of Nickelodeon Party Blast. But I'm not gonna speak to forcefully, I guess? Not too loud. I'm gonna try to speak kind of quietly. Essentially, every illness for me, for some reason, turns into some odd kind of stuffy nose and sore throat, both of which are directly relevant to my ability to commentate, because stuffy nose results in a nasal voice, and sore throat results in, one, like, difficulty speaking, and two, a hoarse voice eventually if I speak for too long, so I'm gonna try to keep these episodes a little bit shorter than usual. Just a little bit. Lame hot wing stories. Also, by GBA standards, that frame by frame animation is actually pretty pretty high standards. Also, this isn't that true to the show, but whatever. But why do you not have Rocket himself? Why don't you actually have Otto? You no, know, whatever. Video games. It's an odd game with a very odd basic concept. I forgot, it's also kind of non-linear, at least at the start, you play games, or you play stuff in whatever order you desire. And as you can see, there are indeed four characters to play as, but as the game points out, only auto is actually playable right now. Everybody does have different stats, which I think just determines their speed, I don't quite remember. We'll have to see. Um, yeah, there you go. So you can switch between three different things. You can run around on foot, which auto isn't very quick with. I don't think anybody's very quick with being on foot, but it's the most convenient for actually moving around. Skateboard, it rolls like crazy, has horrible inertia, but it does allow you to... Oops. There we go. You can actually grind on things with it. Yeah. There we go. So enemies are just people with, I don't know, polka dyed heads. I don't really know why you want to use rocket blades. It's, they f they're easier to control, by far. They're faster, but also tighter controls. I don't know. So I might not really use skateboard. Isn't Otto's best stat skateboard anyways? I'm not really sure what makes one better than the other. They're all the same jump height too. Whatever. These aren't well. Not at least a bit of that. I do actually remember a decent chunk of stuff from this game, uh, including the fact that there is actually, like, optional f content that you can find, mostly in the form of stat upgrades, which would well, be nice, because it's not too hard to accidentally get hurt in this game, but we're not gonna assume that I'm going to actually manage to pick any of those up. Now, what we haven't really talked about, sorry dog, so far is the fact that you actually need these stars that we're picking up to progress through the levels. These stars, okay, how are we going foot? 
these stars are just, well, things you need to proceed. There's not an cannot explanation for them or anything like that. You just need stars to get through the level. You'll find, oh, hi, look, I got him. You'll just find occasional machines that require you to have a certain number of things to pass them. And you, they tend to require somewhat decent platforming abilities, as you saw just now. It's not... It's not gonna game over already. There you go. At least I need to pretty consistently drop health. And celebrate that at least. So I'm still some keys. Basically, almost every single... Well, anything in this game is just one big quest to... Get the stuff you need to proceed. Usually, ideally at least, you'll get all that stuff. Come on, Otto. All that stuff by the time you reach the checkpoint. In this case, the key. What do you press? There you go. Action button is what you press. I don't know if it was up or down or whatever. Oh, yeah, also, we can swim. Well, not really swim, we just sink like rocks, which is actually pretty accurate if we have skates on it, I think about it. And I guess you can't swim because of all the pads we're wearing. In any case, you're just normal enemies underwater. You just move slowly, slow underwater. So this game is a game that rewards exploring. Uh, primarily in the sense that you actually need to pick things up. I don't think you usually need 100% stars or anything like that. You usually have some margin of error for picking things up. I think in this particular area there are 20 or something stars or something like that. I remember picking up numbers greatly in excess of what was required in earlier playthroughs of the game. I have attempted many playthroughs of this game, I only managed to actually complete it once. Mostly because I usually get stuck on a certain part, but I didn't really know what to do from there, I think. And then I once, years later, decided to actually pick up the game again because I was just kind of sitting in place and didn't have anything to do. For a few hours, so I just played this. So we have enough stars, and something I forgot about is actually, see, my stars are already six out of ten because the exercises you pick up actually count for the next area, which is very convenient. So there's always a reason to keep picking up stars when you see them. Oh yeah, this sounds a little bit annoying. So there, there are in some senses types of terrain that are. What? Best traversed with some certain kind of. Go away. Some certain kind of. I don't know what you'd call it. Means of locomotion. In this case, sand is really something you only ever want to go on foot on. You just move too slowly with anything on wheels. But you do move more quickly if you're on something on the wheels in the air. So, in certain cases, it can actually be better to platform with the skateboard and roller skates on these things. You just need to jump to move around. Alright. Although there is some relative precision needed in this game, sometimes. You can trap down awesome. If you want to actually hit enemies. Actually, because there are certain enemies you'll find later on that really take some precision to actually get a hit on without getting hit yourself, or actually to hurt at all, but we'll run to the pains of that later on. This game does have a little bit of difficulty to it, it's not anything immensely hard, aside from the nuisances of... trying to... just find the things you need to find sometimes. That's really the worst of it. Monkey does not, for some reason, drop Z's, Z's, as I feel has been promised after everything thus far in the game. Alright. Combo! Whoa, wow, well, I was about to say combo, but what happened there? Well, so those monkeys look very displeased after you hit them in the head. Anyways. Okay. Anything more? 
I don't want this episode going too much longer. I do want episodes to usually be around 10 minutes. This game is actually a little bit longer by GBA standards than most games tend to be. Um, and it's not by padding out the game either for the most part. It actually is just by having levels that you go through. Um, it's not like Chain of Memories length, although Chain of Memories is basically had procedurally generated levels. The only long GBA I've actually seen that had unique levels all the way through was Clinoid Heroes. That was a pretty exceptional example. This game is okay in length, you can beat it if... I don't know. Speedrun would probably be like half an hour, I don't know. Oh yeah, you can also spend, uh, well, you actually don't get the choice, but if you don't have full health, it'll spend stars for giving you Z's, if I remember right. Right. Enemies that you cannot kill, most notably. Buzz Sods, that's nice. Things actually trying to kill us. But so notice there are no stars required for this part. Down we go. That usually indicates that we're at the final portion. In this case, the Reggie portion. Hi, Reggie. Hi. Right. Here we are. I'm waiting to take a break between each of these episodes. Oh yeah, you have to wait for these freaking things to fall off. Come on. You're on the other side of the ship. Oh, never mind. Right, whatever. Yeah, I'm gonna need to take a break between these episodes. Just let my voice rest. Okay, but we'll actually get to play as Reggie next episode. Characters do play slightly differently. And some are animated better than others. But for now, that'll be that for this episode. Let's play Rocket Power Dream Scheme. We didn't really say anything as to... Uh, yeah, no cutscenes or anything after that. There will be cutscenes after some levels I remember right. Actually, justifying your entry into later levels. But for now, I just need to save the gang, I think. Get everyone back together. So I'll probably be in Madtown next time. But for now, that'll be that for this episode. Let's play Rock Power Dream Scheme. I need to... Make my throat less itchy. Bye, guys.